Hello, everyone. My name is Daniel Murillo, and I am the Policy and Equitable Development Manager at the City of Seattle's Office of Housing. Thank you for watching this video on the Mount Baker Station Area Development. In this video, we will give an update on the City of Seattle Mount Baker sites and Sound Transit East Portal site. We will also share our draft ideas for redevelopment of the sites and details for how you can give feedback. First, a few words about the Office of Housing. The Office of Housing develops and preserves affordable housing for low-income households. This is done through rental homeownership opportunities, incentive programs, and homeowner stabilization programs. Our investment in Mount Baker includes Mount Baker Village on McClellan Street and Gardner House on MLK Junior Way South and the Estelle. All of these buildings provide affordable housing for low-income families and individuals that is close to transit and opportunities. And now I'd like to introduce Thatcher and Bowden from Sound Transit. Thank you, Daniel. I'm Thatcher and Bowden, Director of Sound Transit's Office of Land Use Planning and Development. And we're excited to be partnering with the Seattle's Office of Housing on this project. Sound Transit is committed to bringing equitable transit-oriented development to our station areas so that more people can live and work near transit. We now have over 2,100 housing units built or in process on Sound Transit's surplus land. At the Mount Baker Station, we originally purchased land to construct the Beacon Hill Tunnel and Mount Baker Station Guideway. And now we are partnering with the Office of Housing to develop both properties in a way that could provide community amenities, including affordable housing, childcare, and open space. And now I'll turn it back to the city of Seattle. Hi, everyone. My name is Nick Welch from the Office of Planning and Community Development. I'm here to share some background on Mount Baker and the community planning that has brought us to this point. This map shows the Mount Baker station area, which is the area of roughly a 10 minute walk around the Link Light Rail Station. This includes the Lowe's on McClellan Street, the QFC and Rite Aid across the street, and Franklin High School. It is a community of residents, small businesses, and neighborhood institutions that reflects the diversity of the Rainier Valley. After decades of community planning, exciting changes are coming to the Mount Baker station area. The City of Seattle and Sound Transit plan to develop affordable housing, child care, an early learning center, and potential open space next to the Mount Baker Link Light Rail Station. The development sites are labeled with the letters A and B on this map. Over time, community members have expressed a clear vision for the station area as a vibrant and welcoming gateway for the neighborhood and North Rainier Valley. Community members have emphasized the importance of safety and ensuring the station area is well connected and accessible for people walking, biking, and taking transit. The community also has a long standing goal of an inviting central public space in the Mount Baker station area. Since many small businesses in the station area serve communities of color, the Mount Baker community has also advocated for equitable development without displacement. Community members created this vision through several important planning efforts. The North Rainier Neighborhood Plan was first created in 1999. We worked with the community to update the plan in 2010 and developed an urban design framework in 2011. Public agencies such as SDOT or the Department of Transportation are making investments in the station area through long-term projects like Accessible Mount Baker. Most recently, in 2019, a group of experts from the Urban Land Institute made recommendations for a vibrant and welcoming station area. One recommendation was to develop the former UW laundry site with affordable housing and other community benefits. That opportunity is before us now, and we are excited to move into this exciting new phase. And now I'll turn it over to the Office of Housing. Thanks, Nick. My name is Bin Jung from the Office of Housing, and I am the project lead on the Mount Baker station area development. Like mentioned earlier, the City of Seattle received three parcels from the University of Washington in June 2020. The terms of the transfer state that these sites are to be redeveloped for affordable housing, childcare, and an early learning research facility. Sound Transit seeks to redevelop their East Portal site for affordable housing. Both sites also have an opportunity for potential open space. The parcels transferred to the City of Seattle are outlined in yellow on the map. The largest parcel is the former UW Laundry site and King's Hall, along with the parking lot associated with King's Hall. The second parcel is the small triangular parking lot between King's Hall building and the light rail station. The third parcel is a square parking lot located on South Forest Street under the light rail tracks. 
Sound Transit's East Portal site is in pink. It runs from South McClellan Street along 25th Avenue South and ends just before South Winthrop Street. What will be on the site has already been determined by the terms of the transfer, but there is still opportunity to influence how the new development will look and feel. The City of Seattle and Sound Transit are working in partnership with community stakeholders and a consultant team on the site planning and urban design strategy study to develop a report of ideas and recommendations on how the new development could look and feel. The goal of this study is to brainstorm ideas about where to locate buildings, open space, and other elements on the site. We will also develop preferred site features and recommendations informed by community feedback. This study will inform the future redevelopment request for proposals and the long-term station area vision. The City of Seattle and Sound Transit will release a request for proposals and development teams will submit proposals on how they would develop the property. The final report of recommendations will be part of the request for proposals and developers will be encouraged to read and respond to the report in their proposals. A team of city agencies, Sound Transit, and enterprise community partners are working on the project. The consultant team is Walker Macy, Weinstein AU, and Pertit. Community engagement is important to the success of the project. Because of COVID-19, much of our outreach is being done online. Online surveys and presentations is the primary way to give feedback. Department of Neighborhoods' community liaisons are conducting targeted outreach to small businesses and residents and holding virtual focus groups in different languages such as Amharic, Mandarin, Spanish, and Vietnamese. City agencies and Sound Transit have also met with community-based organizations in the Mount Baker Station area to present the project and get feedback. Redevelopment of the Mount Baker Station area will be a multi-year, multi-phase process. We began the study last November and our first engagement opportunity was in February 2021 with our goals and priorities survey. We asked for top priorities and preferences on how the new development could look and feel. We had over 850 responses to the survey and an engagement summary is available on our website. The results of the survey inform different ideas for the site, which we will be sharing with you later. We will also share our ideas through in-language focus groups and presentations at community organizations. We will have a site idea survey available online from June 9th to 23rd, where community will be able to provide thoughts and feedback. In July, a final report of recommendations and an engagement summary will be published. This report will be part of all future redevelopment requests for proposals. The city plans to release a phase one redevelopment request for proposals in fall 2021. Developers will be encouraged to read and respond to the final report from this study for their proposals, and a development team will be identified in spring 2022. Community engagement will continue in 2022 and 2023 as the development team shares designs and asks for feedback. We received over 850 responses from our February goals and priority survey. The responses and comments echoed the overall station area vision. We heard major concerns about safety and security in the area. We heard hopes that the area would become a vibrant and welcoming space where people from diverse backgrounds could mingle and interact. We also heard support for development without displacement of existing businesses, and a desire to continue celebrating the history and presence of Black, Indigenous, and people of color communities in the area. The look and feel of a site is influenced by the locations of buildings, the locations and types of open space, building and design features, and other design details. Although this new development cannot solve all crime, it will bring more people to the neighborhood and make it feel more active. The design and features of the new development can help enhance personal safety. It can create a welcoming and inviting environment for people walking and biking through the site and for those sitting and staying there. We want to remind everyone that these site ideas are in progress and will most likely change between now and the redevelopment of the sites. Nothing is final at this early stage. We will share ideas for building locations and features and ideas for open space locations and qualities you want to have in the open space. We will also share ideas for moving around and how the new development can be safe, well-connected, and accessible. We divided the redevelopment ideas into different sections shown on this map here to make it easier to understand the opportunities and challenges for the site. 
The northwest section is by South McClellan Street and 25th Avenue and is currently fenced off with trees and landscaping. The northeast section is the square parking lot under the light rail tracks. Both sites have an opportunity to create a safer experience for people walking and biking. They are both smaller areas that are good for activities. They are also easily accessible from existing streets. Challenges include the steepness of the northwest section, the light rail tracks overhead in the northeast section, and heavy car traffic and loud noise from the light rail. The central section is the former UW Laundry Building and the King's Hall Building. The section has many great opportunities. It is large and flat, which is good for development. It is also located next to the light rail station and existing housing and businesses. It faces two major streets, South Forest and 27th Avenue South, and is also well connected to the other sections. Challenges include car traffic from the pickup and drop off area and loud noise from the light rail. The west section is from the light rail tunnel almost to South Winthrop Street and from 25th Avenue to the former UW Laundry Building. This section has a good connection to Chiesty Green Space on the opposite side of 25th Avenue and has a good connection to the central section. However, it is very steep, which makes development expensive and difficult. Steep hillsides can also limit what kinds of open space can be developed. The south section is the parking lot between the King's Hall building and the light rail station. This section is well connected to the central section. It is on South Winthrop Street and has a good connection to Chiesty Boulevard. However, it is steep in the southwest section where South Winthrop Street turns into Chiesty and there is car traffic along Winthrop as well. There is also a southeast section near the light rail station that we are thinking of separately from the south section because SDOT may connect 27th Avenue South and South Winthrop Street in the future. This would help with a potential future Metro Transit Center relocation. SDOT is currently talking with Sound Transit and King County Metro to better understand the opportunities and challenges of relocating the Metro Transit Center. This study and redevelopment does not address the potential transit center relocation, but we are leaving this section for temporary uses so that it may be possible in the future. The February Goals and Priorities Survey asked about future buildings on the site. Comments focused on the height of the buildings and how big it would be. There was general support for affordable housing and maximizing the amount of housing built. But people also asked us to consider things such as natural light and the sound from the light rail and Rainier Ave. These qualities like good light and quiet sounds are important to how the site will look and feel. Based on our expertise and community input, we created two ideas for building locations. The left image is what the buildings look like looking straight down from the sky or in plan view. This is the Lowe's. And this is the light rail station. The black outlines represent the buildings. The yellow is courtyard or plaza space for the buildings. And the green is open space. There are also white buildings on the west section, which we will discuss later. The right image is a bird's eye view of the building, which shows what they would look like in 3D. In this idea, there is one larger and one smaller building located next to each other in the central section. Both buildings are eight stories tall. The smaller building faces 27th Avenue South and the existing pickup and drop off area. The larger building faces South Forest Street, which gives easy access to the buildings from the existing streets. There is a courtyard in between the two buildings that opens up to the open space, which is in the south section. A section of the courtyard would be a play area for the childcare and early learning facility. Some benefits of this idea are the shared courtyard between the two buildings. The courtyard also connects to the open space which can make the development feel easy and comfortable to walk through. Buildings on existing streets make it easy to walk in and out of buildings and businesses on the ground floor and makes the street feel active and busy. Our second idea has two buildings on opposite sides of a large open space. The larger building on the central section of the site wraps around a large courtyard that faces 27th Avenue South. A section of this courtyard would be a play area for the childcare and early learning facility. The smaller building is located on the south section of the site on South Winthrop Street and has a small courtyard. Both buildings are eight stories tall. Some benefits of this idea are that each building has its own courtyard. The large courtyard that faces 27th Avenue South can create a welcoming and inviting environment to sit away from the street. Both buildings have sections that face the south, which means the housing units will have more sunlight. 
In the Site Idea survey, we ask if you like or dislike Idea 1 and Idea 2 and why. These building locations are not final. We want to share with you our thoughts on what some possible locations could be and hear your feedback. No matter where the buildings are located, building features can connect buildings with the surrounding neighborhood and make a development feel more welcoming. Design details can make the buildings more attractive and interesting. They can also help with greater visibility and enhance safety. Features include windows to maximize sunlight in the housing units, building set back from the street to make space for wider sidewalks and landscaping. These features can make buildings feel less big. Materials, patterns, and colors can be similar to other buildings in the area to make it feel like one neighborhood, or it can be different to make the development feel new and unique. Art, murals, and designs by local artists can reflect the history of the neighborhood. Sidewalks and signs can be in the same color and style to help bring the new development together and make it feel like you are in a specific place. We also want to share ideas about open space locations and qualities. Open space refers to undeveloped space such as parks, courtyards, landscaped areas, plazas, pea patches, and playgrounds. It can be private or public. Open space helps provide space for a range of activities, can help buildings feel smaller, break up large blocks, and can create a buffer between buildings and the street. From our February Goals and Priorities survey, we heard support for an inviting central open space in the Mount Baker Station area. We heard that a neighborhood park or open space would make this area feel more peaceful, especially with the buses, cars, and light rail noise. We also heard there was a need for play areas for kids and young people. People also expressed interest in restoring existing open space in the neighborhood and having any new open space connect to Chiesty Boulevard. Based on community priorities and our expertise, we created two ideas for a large central open space at the site. We also have ideas for other open space types at different sections of the site, which we will talk about later. The image on the left shows the large open space located in the south section of the site on South Winthrop Street. The blue lines are potential walking and biking paths that would help you move around the site. The drawing shows what the open space could look like from the light rail station entrance looking west, with your back towards Rainier Avenue. The images show what potential activities could take place in the open space, such as a natural garden area and a place for friends and families to meet. Some benefits of this idea are that the open space would get a lot of sun because it faces south. It would connect to Chiesty Boulevard and connect to the courtyard in between the two buildings in the central section. In our second idea, the large open space is located on the south and central section of the site. There is a building on the north side and a building on the south side of the space, as you can see in the drawing. Some benefits of this idea are that the open space would be in the center of the new development. The open space would be away from the street and there would be shade from the south building. The foot traffic from the buildings would help the open space feel active and well used. Since the west and northwest sections are very steep and difficult to build on, we looked at it separately from the other sections. Because it is difficult to build tall buildings on steep hillsides, we are considering townhomes for affordable home ownership opportunities. In this idea, there are townhomes on the west section just south of the light rail tunnel. The rest of the west section is a natural area with a walking trail up to 25th Avenue. There is also space for potential dog park or open space activities on the northwest section on South McClellan Street. A benefit of this idea is the connection between South Forest Street and the light rail station to 25th Avenue, making it easier to access the light rail from Beacon Hill. There is also opportunity for more townhomes in this idea than in our second idea. In our second idea, there are townhomes north of the light rail tunnel on South McClellan Street. There is potential to make a community garden or a play area off South Forest Street just south of the light rail tunnel. In this idea, the rest of the west section is a restored natural area without any public access. Some benefits of this idea is the opportunity for potential open space on the west section and not just in the large central open space. In the site idea survey, we ask if you like or dislike idea one and idea two and why. Just like the building locations, the open space locations and type are not final. A longer planning process for open space will happen in the future, but we wanted to share our thoughts on opportunities and get your feedback. The Northeast and Southeast sections are our final sections. Because the Northeast section is located under the light rail tracks, 
it could be a good location for smaller activities like a skate park and sport courts. The southeast section is good for temporary or pop-up uses like food trucks, farmers markets, and space for vendors. Thank you for watching this presentation. For more information, visit our website or use our QR code. For next steps, please answer our site idea survey and share your thoughts on the ideas you just saw. An online Q&A session will take place on Wednesday, June 16th from 12 to 1 p.m. and again from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. with city agencies and Sound Transit. For more information, please visit our website. A final report of recommendations will be available in July. If you have any more questions or would like more information, please contact Bin Jung at bin.jung at seattle.gov. Thank you again for watching and for shaping the future of the Mount Baker Station area.